Hi, my name is Mike Randall and I give talks with an 18th century flavour. In all I can draw on about 30 talks, so the intention is always to make them itinerary relevant, even if they're not destination specific. I'm going to show a couple of clips. One presented at the Museum of London around 10 years ago when I was very much still learning the ropes. It relates to the story of my ancestor 300 years ago after I had explained to the audience that I come from a family of inveterate hoarders. How long do you reckon to keep your shopping lists? <laughs> you've been to Waitrose or Sainsbury's, you've gone back to the car, you've put the bags into the boot, and you look down and you see that the shopping list is at the bottom of the trolley. Do you push it back to the trolley park and leave it there? No, of course not. You pick up your list and you put it in the bin. Or maybe you take it home and you check it off against all the items that you've purchased and then throw it away. But I wouldn't mind betting that the life expectancy of your shopping lists is measured in days, if not hours. In my family, we keep shopping lists going back to 1790. <laughs> that then is the background, the fact that when I got married 26 years ago, one of the very first items I carried up the stairs to my wife's top floor flat was this old horsehair chest. I say old, it was new in 1782. It cost 10 shillings and sixpence. I know because I still have the receipt. <laughs> The second clip is taken from a sound recording on one of the Princess Cruises and it comes at the end of a talk I was giving about castaways. Unfortunately it doesn't show me, but it should give you some idea of the content of the talk. And just in case you think that being a castaway is not a modern risk, I'll just mention what happened to a friend of mine from New Zealand when he sailed his catamaran through the islands of the Pacific some years ago. In a violent storm, the boat was driven against the outer reef, protecting an uninhabited island. The catamaran broke in two, and my friend ended up inside the reef with a boat which was no longer seaworthy. A few days later, a rescue ship arrived, took my friend off his de desert island, and in due course, he was delighted to get a fat check from his insurance company, covering the loss of his boat and all his worldly goods. It was only then that the Kiwi authorities contacted him and said that they'd noticed that he'd had a cat on board with him when he set off. Where was it? In practice, the Moggy had run off just before my friend was rescued, leaving the cat stranded on the island. The New Zealand authorities pointed out that the island was a designated nature reserve, uh, that, were, that there were a lot of nesting birds on the island, and that my friend would have to pay for a group of naturalists to be sent to the island to retrieve the cat and assess any damage caused. The actual bill for the rescue came to slightly more than the insurance payout for the boat, thereby proving that a cat is sometimes more expensive than a catamaran. Thanks for watching, and here's to some great cruises.